Hey everybody, it's Kay, and this is my 20, December 2016 wrap-up video. It's going to be my 2016 wrap-up video. I don't think I'm going to record another one before the year is over. I'm pulling up my um, Goodreads now so I can give you the run-through of what I read um, November and December of 2016. I did meet my goal of 60 books for this year. Yay! But I'll tell you what. I'm not going to stress myself out about a, a, a goal like that again. That 60 books was too much for me. You know, I know some people could do 60 books in their sleep, but for me, that was a little bit too much. I initially had set a goal of 50 books, but then Goodreads was hyping me up. You're three books ahead. You're four books ahead. You know, I'm thought, huh, if I'm ahead, I'm going to up my goal. And then I got toward, you know, closer toward the end of the year, and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to need it. <coughs> but I did. But you know, it's not even important how many books you read during the year. To me, it's more important about, you know, did you enjoy what you read? What was the quality of what you read? Um, the books that I read last quarter, the la well, the last two months, I should say, some of them I really enjoyed and some of them I really did not. And why is it that coming up on my phone? I'm going to have to go online and, and look at it. Because I, I just can't remember off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, let me just do that real quick. So, you know, I mentioned in a previous video I hadn't been feeling well. And so I was bound and determined this morning. I said, you know, today's going to be a good day. I'm going to feel okay. I'm going to get out of the house. I'm going to, you know, treat myself for Christmas. I went and got my nails done. And I went to Hobby Lobby to buy some things. And as soon as I got to Hobby Lobby, I got sick. Thank goodness I was, you know, I made, I was able to make a beeline to the restroom, handle my business. But, you know, after that, I didn't even feel like shopping. I'm like, let me just grab my stuff, pay for it, get out of here. So for Christmas, all I really want is to feel better, you know. And then on top of that, my mom called me a few days ago and said that she and my stepfather both have pneumonia. So Merry Christmas to us. You know, this 2016 has just been rough in so, so many different ways. But um, we're going to get through it. And we're going to be all right. I'm going to try to make this a quick video. Um, I'm recording another video tonight, too. I want to get them both out of the way so I could just sit back and relax on this beautiful Christmas Eve. I was supposed to go to a party today for dinner, but I knew I wouldn't be able to eat anything there, so I had to pass that up. And, you know, I'm just going to sit here and relax tonight and um, watch TV, I guess, watch some Christmas movies. Anyway, let's get into the wrap up. So, um, I don't know if it's because I've been ill because of my attitude. I don't know why, but there were several books I didn't, I just didn't like. I just wasn't in the frame of mind to enjoy these books, I guess. I don't know, but I'm going to read them out to you. So, Someone is Watching by Joy Fielding. This was a thriller. I didn't find it thrilling. I didn't like this book. The main character was so annoying. She really, really got on my nerves. What was her name? Bridget? No, that doesn't sound right. Bridget. Brittany. Ba Bailey. Her name was Bailey. And she was a private detective who was attacked and raped while she was out on surveillance. And the book is about her dealing with the aftermath of that and trying to figure out who it was that attacked her. And I could tell you all the red herrings that the author threw at me, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am, didn't buy any of them. I figured out very early in the book who it was that did it, but I stuck in there because I wanted to see how it was going to be revealed. And when it was revealed, it wasn't spe spectacular to me. Now, the writing of this book wasn't so bad. I mean, she was a good writer, but the story itself just fell flat to me. It didn't work for me. Um, next, I um, listened to The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I was looking forward to this book 
because I'd heard so many reviews on it, but I didn't like it. I gave it three stars. Um, it was okay story, but it wasn't the best. I, I just didn't... There was something about it that I didn't like. I don't know what, but... Something was just missing in that book to me. Yeah. And then there was The Twelve Tribes of Hattie. I tried and tried my best to like this book. But for whatever reason, I just couldn't get into it. I felt like... I didn't feel any rapport with any of the characters. I, I couldn't even identify with Hattie. And her 12 kids... I mean, the kids didn't seem connected to Hattie or to each other. It, something about the book just fell, just didn't work for me. I don't know what it was. Maybe five years from now I'll read it and I'll have a different opinion. But I just didn't like any of the characters in the book. Maybe that's why I didn't like the book itself. I don't know. I, I just don't know. And then, you know, I didn't enjoy The Woman in Cabin 10, but I thought I'd give Ruth Ware another try and I listened to In a Dark, Dark Wood. Another thriller. I can't remember the name of that character. I didn't really enjoy that book at all. I didn't think it was as good and as thrilling and exciting as people made it out to be in the reviews. I, I just didn't like it. Um, next, Before the Fall by Noah Hawley. Now, I did actually like this book. It's a book about a plane crash. Um, there are two people who survived the plane crash, Scott, who is a painter, and a four-year-old boy who's the son of a millionaire. Scott was riding on the plane at the invitation of the millionaire's wife. They were friends in passing kind of thing, vacationing at Martha's Vineyard. He mentioned he wanted to go home. She said, oh, we're taking the plane. Why don't you come with us? He agrees to go. He almost didn't. At the last minute, he decided he was going to go. Hops on the plane. It's the millionaire's family, then there's a billionaire and his wife, and then the flight crew, and a bodyguard who are on the plane, and when the plane crashes, Scott and the four-year-old boy are the only two to survive. Now, that's not giving a spoiler, that's on the jacket, you know, of the book. You find out very early what it's about. Now, what I liked about the book was the fact that the author took us through the author introduced us to everybody who was on the plane and let us know what was going on in their lives before the fall, before the plane crash. And the, the constant was Scott's story and dealing with the aftermath of the plane crash, him dealing with the police and dealing with the media and, and what happened after the crash. So I, I did like the book. It wasn't a quick read for me, and I did have to push my way through some parts. But all in all, I enjoyed the book. I thought it was very well written. It was good. The next book was Zoo by James Patterson. Um, most people have either read a James Patterson or they're never going to read one. They love them or they hate them or they're indifferent. Zoo was entertaining to me and basically it's about when animals attack. And I enjoyed the ride. I thought it was good. And I'm looking forward to Zoo too. I haven't read that one yet, but maybe sometime early next year I'll get into Zoo too. Um, a Man Called Ove is a book that, it's, it's a short book. It wasn't a quick read for me, though. Um, I had to actually check it out from the library twice in order to finish the book. I did write down some quotes from the book, though, that I'll share with you. <coughs> the book is about a cantankerous old man who lives in Sweden in his little house, you know, in his neighborhood. There are rules you go by, and he believes that you follow the rules. I'll tell you this, when I, when I read this book, you know who I thought about? The old man in the movie Up. You know the animated movie with the house and the boy, the Boy Scout with the balloons and all of that? That is exactly what A Man Called Old remind me of. The character Old remind me of that cartoon gentleman in that movie. But here are a few quotes that I pulled from the, from the book. This is his wife describing him. He believes so strongly in things, justice and fair play and hard work in a world where right just had to be right. And that was, oh, he did not function well when there was disorder and chaos. Um, 
But sorrow is a un, is unreliable in that way. When people don't share it, there's a good chance that it will drive them apart instead. So basically they're saying after a loss, if there are two people who share a loss, if they don't grieve together, that grief can drive them apart. And I, I really like the way that the author wrote the story of grief that um, Ove had. All people want to live dignified lives. Dignity just means something different to different people. I really like that quote. Ove had never been asked how he lived before he met her, but if anyone had asked him, he would have answered that he didn't. You only need one, way, one ray of light to chase all the shadows away, she said to him once when he asked her why. She had to be so upbeat all of the time, or the whole time, excuse me. Um, and then finally, he was a man of black and white, and she was color, all the color he had. The only thing he had ever loved until he saw her was numbers. I thought that was interesting. But it doesn't surprise me because of, oh, he was just a very orderly type person. He didn't really show emotion, so that really wasn't surprising. Um, next, I wanted to get a book in for Christmas, and this is the book that I, I was able to get from the library. It is A Seal for Christmas by Brenda Jackson. It is a romance novel. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't really read romance novels. I just don't get into them, but I wanted a Christmas book, and I was disappointed that this book didn't have more Christmas in it. It did have a lot of romance in the couple, and the book got romantic before I even blinked my eyes. I'm like, they hooked up already? They just met. But, you know, I guess that's the true fashion of a romance novel. So Stacy Carlson, she runs a gift shop, and she meets her, her um, landlord, who is sexy Eli Steele, who comes from the Steele family. And the two of them fall head over heels for each other, but they don't want the other to know that they're madly in love because it's supposed to be like an arrangement kind of thing. But um, yeah, it was a predictable book, but it was well written. This evidently is part of a series on the Steele Brothers. I don't know what part of the series or anything about the series. Like I said, I just wanted to get a Christmas in, a Christmas book in. And I just wish this book had more about Christmas in it. Carols, parties, decorating, gift giving, something. It, you know, and it, and it just didn't, you know, lesson learned for me. Next, I listened to this beautiful book, Small Great Things by Jody Pico. Now, I loved, I thought this book was so well written. I thought she did a great job. I haven't read any of her books before, so not that I can remember. So this one, for this to be my first book by her, I was pleased. I, I really, really was. I saw a lot of four and five stars on Goodreads, and I thought, okay, well, let's see. Let's, let's really see, because I saw some ones and twos in there, too. I really, really enjoyed the book. I thought her storytelling was great. It didn't drag anywhere for me. I was able to flow right through it. Uh, her characterization on point. I really liked her characters and their attitudes. I loved who I was supposed to love. I hated who I was supposed to hate. I got frustrated with every character in the book at some point. She had enough um, angst and anxiety to keep me interested. I love the background stories that she gave on the characters. The only thing, the only criticism I would have of this book would be, you know, and it's so typical now that you don't even, well, it's just typical that a lot of times when a white author writes about black people, black people always need saving in some form or fashion. And it always has to be a white person that saves them. That would be my only criticism of this book is the white savior stereotypes in the book but other than that I enjoyed the book I was on edge and I was like I said I was listening to this on audio and Tony award-winning actress and singer 
Audra McDonald. I don't know if you know who that is, but she read the part of Ruth, who was the main character. She did a fantastic job. And then there were a couple of other narrators, too, and, and they both did a good job. The guy who read for the antagonist Turk, great job. Great job reading it. So I, I really did like it. And finally, to the book that I'm currently reading, this is a book club selection for January. And I hope to finish this book within the next couple of days. Um, this is Love Warrior by Glennon Doyle Melton. It is one of, you know, Oprah's choice books. I'm on chapter 10 of this book. There are only 15 chapters, and I have yet to find Oprah the aha moment in this book. Where's the arc of this book? Because um, it's just not doing anything for me. I, I don't know. I, the lady, I mean, it's a memoir, and she's telling her life story. She's telling about some of the battles that she's overcome in her life, but I just don't feel any type of real connection to the character. I, to me, this is just my opinion, okay, my opinion. Her target market for this book would be a middle-class college-educated white woman in her 20s or 30s with a couple of kids who is married and not happy, who's had to fight a few demons in her life, but she doesn't know what exactly she wants to be happy. She doesn't know if she wants to stay in the marriage or leave in order to achieve happiness. That is the target market I feel for this book. I mean, she grew up, you know, you grew up in the suburbs, two-parent home, everything is given to you and available to you. You make some bad decisions and choices, but this pretty much is who she is. And I think that people that can relate to her in this book would be people who um, grew up more in that context or fit that fit that perceived, my perceived target market for this book. That's just my perceived target market, but I think that that's who she was targeting. Or, or maybe she was targeting anybody and everybody who has to fight through a life challenge, but I just can't connect to her through this book. Um, it is, is, is some of the, yeah, It'll be interesting sometimes, though, when I go to book club and I hear the other women voice their opinions on a particular book, it could change my mind. They might open my eyes and point out things to me that I just can't see. But like I said, I'm on chapter 10. There are only 15 chapters, and I'm waiting for the, <gasps> okay, moment. I haven't gotten there yet. So five more chapters. I hope I get it. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's my December 20. 16 wrap up and and I guess I'll do another video on my 2017 reading goals tell you all about that later have a very 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 blessed and merry Christmas a prosperous and joyous new year bye bye everybody